Previously on Band Geek 8408. Hello friends and neighbors, today we're going to talk about a recent movie trend. And this got me thinking about other two-parters in storytelling, specifically two-part television episodes. And between these two parts of the episode, we get what else? A cliffhanger. I kind of have mixed feelings about cliffhangers. On the one hand, yes, they can sometimes just be cheap tricks. But on the other hand, if a cliffhanger is done well... Alright, Diane. I'm making my 17th attempt at taking over this channel. Now drop the review and step aside and nobody gets hurt. Will Matt be allowed to finish his sentence? Stay tuned to find out! You gonna get out of that chair, Guyan? No, come on! I haven't taken over anything in over a year! Go away now. Fine. Idiot. Where was I? If a cliffhanger is done well, then it will take advantage of the natural segments that occur in stories. Think about classical storytelling. Think about the way that we typically tell stories. It's a three-act structure. Act one, exposition. We introduce our character, we introduce our premise, and at the very end we introduce our conflict, what our protagonist is going to be facing. Act two, the conflict. Our hero tries to face the conflict, but he is unable to, and he ends up making things worse, and he hits his lowest point. Act three, the resolution. Our hero learns all he needs to learn to fight this conflict, he fights this conflict, and it is resolved either positively if it's a happy story or negatively if it's a tragedy. It is firmly ingrained into our system to split stories into three acts like this. That's just how we tell stories. Even something as simple as a romance. Act one, boy meets girl. Act two, boy loses girl. Act three, boy regains girl. Not all of our stories work this way, but the vast majority of them do. And when a story is split into two parts, typically what happens is that act one and act two are schmoozed into the first part. So we have our exposition and we have the introduction of our Conflict, and we have our heroes trying to solve the conflict, but ending up making things worse, and they usually hit their lowest point by the time we get to the To Be Continued. And then Act 3, we have the resolution. They figure out what they need to figure out, and everything is resolved. And it might just be me, but it always seemed to me that in two-part stories, the first part always seemed a little meatier. And maybe it's just because there are two acts in that story, but I always liked the first part better than I liked the second part. For example, I think that Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1 is better than Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2. So a good cliffhanger, whether it's between the divisions of a chapter, or the divisions of a television episode, or between two parts of a story, will take advantage of the natural split in stories, the natural segments of stories. Rather than inserting a random man with a gun or an evil twin just for the sake of adding suspense. So now let's bring it back to the two-part movies. So splitting a movie into two parts like this isn't detrimental to the movie if it's done well, and I think it was done well with Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. It turned out two decent movies. I can't speak for Breaking Dawn because I didn't see it, and I can't speak for The Hobbit because thus far Nobody has seen it. So what do I think of two-part movies? Well, my opinion of two-part movies goes back to the initial non-cynical reason for splitting a movie into two parts like this. The non-cynical reason, if you remember from the first part, is pretty much the same as the reason for splitting a television episode into two parts. There's so much story that it has to have two separate parts in order to tell it all. And in this case, there was so much happening in Deathly Hallows and they wanted to maintain the integrity of the story that they decided to split it into two parts. Parts. And this is actually where I have my problem. Splitting movies into two parts like this seems to be indicative of a certain amount of laziness in writing movies. Specifically in writing movies that are based on books. Because we want so badly to be absolutely and unerringly faithful to the book, we are now willing to attend two different screenings in order to see that carried out. But if you've watched my previous movies, then you know that I don't necessarily think that movies should be unerringly faithful to the books. And I honestly think that we're cheating ourselves when we do make them so unerringly faithful because then what is the movie offering other than what the book already offered? V for Vendetta the movie is different from V for Vendetta the book, and a lot of people are still questioning why I like the movie better, and I think it's because the movie offers us something different than what the book offers us. And to be perfectly honest, this is one case where 
it's almost a tie. The book offers us quite a lot of good stuff too, and I would almost recommend reading the book and watching the movie both together and taking everything that they both have to offer. So why do it? Do the movie makers really think that it's going to improve the story if they include more of the little details? It's getting to the point where we are depending on the book's details to carry the movie rather than any original thought on the part of the movie makers. And I know that this is an idea that I'm not going to rally a lot of support around, and I don't really expect to, and I don't really expect two-part movies to go anywhere anytime soon. But I think when we look at the dearth of creativity that we have in recent movies, we really need to ask ourselves, why do we feel it necessary to be unerringly faithful to the details of the original book? And you might think that I'm being an old fuddy-duddy and overanalyzing this, but this is honestly what I think. But as always, I look forward to hearing your opinions on this. Leave them in the comments, leave them as a video response. I look forward to hearing from you. And until next time, this is Matt Guyon saying, the end. Or is it? Thank you.